Hello, I'm Dr. Craig Stern from Propharma Pharmaceutical Consultants. If you've been following our programs over the last few, you'll note that we've been talking about drug cost. And I want to finish that, at least at the moment, before we move on to areas that are much broader and perhaps of greater impact. But drug cost obviously is of, of critical concern. And if you recall in the past, we've talked about how do you pay for a prescription claim? And the prescription claim, as we've identified, is paid by the ingredient cost plus the dispensing fee plus the tax minus the copay or the deductible. That's the cost. We also identified that the ingredient cost is, in fact, a percentage of some actual drug cost and that commonly in contracts that are addressed, either in public or private entities, that the ingredient cost is based on something called average wholesale price. And finally, if you recall, we talked about the fact that the average wholesale price can often be an inflated number so that the manufacturer is offering a larger number to the pharmacist so that the pharmacist can make a larger margin when they're using contracts that are based on AWP. Now the real question that we have to address here is what is cost? And multiple issues are here. There are multiple different costs and people are using them. But just to summarize for a moment, if the average wholesale price is a problem because it has multiple times that it's inflated, then the question is, is what is cost and what do you use to address it or to replace AWP? There have been multiple options. One is the wholesale acquisition cost which presumably is a better number than AWP. And since uh, September 26 of 2009, AWP has had a definition in law. That definition is WAC times 1.2 or 120% of WAC. So there is some sort of legal definition to arrive at it, but not all manufacturers have to use that. However, many and most manufacturers do publish a wholesale acquisition cost. There are also other prices, but what is also happening in the industry is that individual states and many of the other programs are moving to something called actual acquisition cost, or AAC. Actual acquisition cost is a method to try and remove what the manufacturer is doing in order to sell their product to a number that is closer to what the drug cost is. Because at the end of the day, what everyone is trying to do is to make sure that this number is really some factor, some multiple of drug cost so that there is a way of ensuring that it's anchored to some real number and it is not an inflated number, not a, a arbitrary number. The multiple uh, values for drug cost exist today. There will continue to be that, but I would suggest to you that over time, people are going to move closer and closer to trying to make this number into an actual drug cost whether it's AAC, whether it's WAC times 1.2 or otherwise, and what they'll be doing is reducing the size of margin in the marketplace as they try and do that. Clearly, pharmacy providers will find that to be a problem. So will perhaps hospitals, etc. But it will be a measure of trying to get some control over the fast rising trend of drug cost in the marketplace. I will look forward to speaking to you again and then we'll talk about issues about what should we expect from uh, pharmacy benefits. Thank you and have a great day.